how old is your man to like? Uh, oh, I don't know, know, like six months maybe. It was a musician's friend's deal. It was like maybe 40 bucks and I couldn't resist. I got tired of the guitar, so it was nice to have something in a different tuning. So I'd find like new intervals, new tone combinations that wouldn't occur to me before. While we're talking about your song, what's the title of it? Probably A, a Billion Tongues. I took the challenge to write a new one seriously. So this mandolin part will intertwine with the upright bass part. Any production ideas after that are entirely up to you. So yeah, so while I'm collecting a little riff, I'll, you know, be goofing around one day and I'll come up with something like that's catchy. I'll record it on my little H1. Same thing with lyrics. While I'm brushing my teeth, driving around, some line will occur to me and these lines will go in the back. I have some musical bit I'll develop and then I'll be looking through these lyrical bits. So you've heard Matthew talk about upright bass, mandolin. I've since talked him into some crap. He put some textured electric guitar in the background and I think that's really brought out some of the depth of the song. The other thing we are talking about right now, and hopefully by the time you see this video, we'll have drums, maybe some percussion wrapped in there too. So you would say the title occurs to you first? Something like that. In terms or, of lyric. Yeah, or like the first line, maybe, usually I have to, there's just something promising, some sort of line, yeah, and I have to think about what that line means, who would say it, in what context, blah, 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 and the song develops that from there usually. But also, like, I have things on my mind. If I do this on one day, the results would be different than if I did it a month later. You know, if I've been thinking a lot about, I don't know, like, war or poverty or whatever, that's going to warm its way into sure. putting it together, whereas if I just broke up with someone, that's going to warm its way into whatever. Even if something happens to me and I want to write about it, I find it much easier to do if I create a character. If I break up with someone, I'll create a character who broke up with someone and I'll maybe change the reasons a bit. I might even change gender or whatever. So it's kind of autobiographical in a, in a fictional context, I guess. But not to get too philosophical about it, but isn't everything kind of autobiographical? I feel like it. Like I can only write about what I know about, what I'm concerned about. So just looking at like the fictional characters I come up with in the situations or whatever, I think my own personal attitude and interest still comes through. And I'm certainly not the only writer who, who does this. Suzanne Vega is mostly like, a, I don't know if you're familiar with her music, but she's mostly a short story writer who happens to do it through song. One of the things I really love, you know, working through with Bring You Song artists is the process and what's it really look like to capture all this stuff we've talked about. Like in Matthew's situation, we had him do vocals in here, I think. We did his mandolin out here. I think he actually even sat in this chair. It's awesome to be able to see the pieces come together and almost allow the artist to just choose which environment they want to track in. You know, it really does inform how the end product finds its life. I grew up in a house that had a piano, which I feel was a lot more common like 20 years ago. Like little kids, I liked playing on it. <laughs> and because, it, yeah, and uh, coming up with my own things, I was sort of forced to compose at a really early age because I couldn't read any music or anything. And that annoyed my parents, so they got me a little Casio keyboard that had uh, a drum beat. And it kind of sort of sounded like the music on the radio. I, I remember, you know, I was growing up in the 80s. There was a lot of synthesized music. And I right. think, think when I was in second grade, Wham! was my favorite band. <laughs> and they used kind of sort of tools like this in a, a cheesy, cheap way. It sort of sounded like that. So sixth grade, it was the big year. A number of things happened. One, my uncle gave me a guitar, which I have to say kind of just made sense, more sense to me right away. I started digging into my father's record collection and Records, I guess I'd never noticed before, had had the lyric sheet. I never looked at lyric sheets before, and it'll say verse. And it'll say pre-chorus, chorus, bridge. I'm like, oh, these are the parts of the song. This is interesting. Um, my father had the best of Bob Dylan, the one with the blue cover and his face in silhouette. And I guess I never heard someone just with a, a guitar and voice before. And I was like, oh, this is a song at its most essential. You, need, right. you need some chords, yeah. you need a melody, you need some words, and that technically is a song. Again, you don't know what you don't know, but I, I learned that. I'm like, oh, so this is a song. I clutch the rose Every good soul knows That's how the crimson flows
touch the bone Every good soul knows